Hi, this is David Odell with Odell Complete Concrete. Today what we're going to be doing is uh, getting ready to pour a RV parking area on the side of this house. Nice thing about this location, it's a corner lot and he can utilize his driveway still um, to get into the side yard. So it's an ideal situation for RV parking. This is the area here where he's been currently parking his uh, RV. It's a big motor home, 35 footer. So that means the soil is going to be is pretty good. I mean, he, he drove up on this after a heavy rain. It didn't sink at all. So that means that soil is uh, really good. So I got the laser level set up here. I've already marked a few lines. Right now, I'm just going to get um, some marks on the walls. That way, when my skid steer arrives here, um, we'll be ready to roll. And he should be here within 30 minutes. And I'll have all this thing snap lined out all the way around. And all we got to do is uh, follow the lines. Dig out about 4 inches below them. And we're good to go. So we'll just kind of clean along the edges. That way I can actually snap the line on the walls. So I found my low point to start with and that was the back patio. I know from that point I need to get the water to slope to the front yard. So I found the lowest point in the backyard. Everything else I do from there is going to be lower. And that's how I know it'll be sloping out. Here's another elevation I have to meet here, which is the driveway. And it's also the gate going into this side yard. So we don't want to be uh, up above on these metal on the metal on these mounts because that'll just uh, rust out a lot quicker than it normally would. So we're going to go right to the bottom of uh, the metal brackets. It had just rained the day before on this particular location. You can see that this water really didn't affect it much because of the it's a lot, a lot of sand in it, so it drained real well. It just was what it's going to do is knock the dust down basically when we start scooping the dirt out, which is going to um, save me having to wet it down with a water hose. So the skid steers here now, and a little dump trailer. This is a, a New Holland. Never personally drove one of those myself. We've driven a lot of different ones, but not the New Holland, so can't say much about that one. The, we have a lot of slope out of this backyard, so to minimize me digging a lot of excess dirt, instead of just going with a straight grade, straight line slope i'm gonna kind of arch it in the middle on this side yard so it'll just kind of have a slight arch in it and that way i won't have to dig as quite as much dirt out of this The interesting thing about this, um, to give you a little bit of the uh, past, um, the guy driving the skidster, uh, he actually used to drive uh, concrete trucks about oh, 30 years ago. 
he actually used to deliver concrete to my jobs and now um, he got into uh, the contracting business and uh, he's running his own his own thing now So here's my dump trailer. I used uh, mostly my dump trailer on this one. I did uh, four loads on this is all one day. I did four loads to a transfer location, which is pretty pricey um, to dump dirt because it's so heavy and they go by pound in this area. There is some locations where you can dump it for free as long as you're under, I believe, seven tons a day. Otherwise, you have to have the soil tested for uh, to see if there's any um, what hazardous waste in the dirt. Yeah, that's what it, hazardous waste. If there's hazardous waste in the dirt, then you can't dump it for free. Um, over over seven, seven tons, you have to have paperwork on all your dirt. So transfer station, you don't need it. Although it's uh, about it's a lot more money. So here's kind of what it looks like after you uh, knock it, take the dirt out and grade it around. I pulled a few string lines here and there just to get an idea before uh, we took, we didn't want to take too much dirt out. So put the lines, double checked everything, back bladed it, and now this is ready to fine tune and run the plate compactor on. Now this gate here has some pretty beefy footings I mean they're not that big around but they go down pretty deep so I dug around one of them just to check the depth before I started chipping on because I want to chip the top of those footings down so my new concrete can go over the top and then it'll look a lot better than just having a big footy footing protruding uh, you know so I dug it down verified this footing was deep enough to chip on because I didn't want to loosen this gate up because this is a pretty heavy gate it would be difficult to get it plumb and closing properly again without a lot of excess work so I'm going to chip it down with my little uh, jackhammer I'm gonna, I think I'm going to run my 35 pounder on this one just to pop off about 3 or 4 inches off the top of those footings now this patio, the existing patio in the backyard was sloping, you know, to the backyard. I actually want the water to run to the front yard in this situation. So I had to create a valley back there or swell. Now here's another little area here that comes in real handy on, uh, especially on street sweeping day. You'll be able to pull up in here, not worry about getting a ticket and uh, you'll be safe for the time being in order that way you won't get a street sweeping ticket so this is about a 20 foot by 9 foot area same size as a parking stall basically in a parking lot which is uh, ideal for what this is going to be used for So we just check the square off of the house. I like to make everything square with the house. Everything else really doesn't matter. Some situations it might if you get into a pie lot, but in this one in this case everything's square. House is straight with the property line. Property line walls are straight. City sidewalks are straight. So square is all you need to do off of the house in these situations you can see the crown here on the side yard with that foam I put up against the wall I'm gonna put it on one side I don't need it on both sides although some people put it on both sides but uh, there's really no need one side will get the job done as you can see from this angle the slope on that patio so that created a low point before we dug this dirt out he ended up he did get some flooding and he had cut a trench in the dirt just to get the water to run out and around the side of this house so what i've done is i've kind of simulated that same concept that he started in the dirt by swaling it i'm going to do that in the concrete but just a little bit more subtle
believe it or not that formula you see there is actually running backwards but from that low point to the corner of the back corner of this house that's your swell that's your drainage point so that's how you get the water out and that's how you minimize removing a lot of excess dirt um, out of the backyard out and around the shed you always have to try to work with what's there without creating a lot of excess uh, work I've got foam on basically uh, three sides. I've got it on the back and then the other side. So it's actually only two sides. I've got it on the ends and side. So I put fill or foam on the two sides. Felt used to be a really common practice, but uh, it kind of comes apart pretty easily and it's hard to work with. So now foam is kind of the um, big thing now. For expansion so I'm setting up my screed pins now and once I get these and I notice that uh, I'm running kind of deep everywhere about four and a half five inches which is okay based on the square footage that I'm working with here. I can still get everything on two truckloads. Now, if it was cutting it close, you know, 18, 19, and I went over on the depth, then I'd be in trouble because I'd be getting into a third load. So what I do is uh, I kind of look at it that way. If I can get it with the initial square footage and two loads, uh, a little bit extra depth doesn't matter. It'll be thicker, stronger not only that um, I won't have to import in this case we just took dirt out but in some cases you actually have to bring dirt back in so you have to think of the cost of should I um, go pick up dirt bring it in compact it or should I just add a little bit of concrete to the concrete truck that's already coming and they can also pump it in with the same pump or do I want to pick it up dump it put it in a wheelbarrow wheel it into the backyard so those are all things you got to consider when you're doing these jobs. The rebar here we're putting at uh, two foot centers and it's a 3 8 rebar. Also I'll be putting fiber mesh into the concrete and I add that at the job site because I get the fiber mesh uh, delivered to me in bulk. And that way I get it for a, a real reasonable price compared to having it added at the concrete plant um, you can save a little money going that route so there is uh, pins with that you can use to set your 2x4 on top of but I don't like any of the designs of them to tell you the truth so I just use a wood stake with a um, 16 duplex through the uh, uh, through the wood stake to hold the 2x4 up and that seems to be much more secure and more reliable than any of the uh, other um, type of grade stakes they have out there right now a lot of times they move they slide down um, they're real hard to work with you get congered on them the threads don't work and some of them some of them are spring loaded those fail they slide down you lose grade you don't know it and then it's too late that kind of thing so if you just put a big nail through a fixed point um, it doesn't move Anyway, we've already ran the compactor plate over this and put a lot of water on it before we leave and let it settle in real nicely. It's always good practice to uh, flood the area basically um, the day before you're ready to pour. That way when you show up in the morning, you can walk on it and the mud's not sticking to your feet, but there's still plenty of water in the soil. If you try to wet it the same day or an hour before, you end up tracking mud on your boot and that kicks it up into the concrete. So that's really not a good practice. So this is the day before the pour and you can see how much water we're dumping on this thing. 
Now if we had did this and then tried to pour it the same day, we'd have a muddy mess. We'd have probably chunks of mud in the concrete that would um, actually come out at some point. And you'd have holes in it. So this will just be nice and dry. Plenty of water below when we pour. The only thing I don't like about doing this is you lose all your chalk lines. You just, if you use red, um, you can still see it a little bit, so you have to re-snap everything in the morning of the pour. So here we are pumping it out through the hose. I pumped uh, probably a good 10, 15 gallons of water into that wheelbarrow before I actually started placing the concrete on the ground. Now there's that valley. If you notice how we were screening that diagonally through that backyard, that's to uh, get the flow line to come on out. And then as far as the rebar goes, uh, I have one guy that just focuses on raising rebar as we pour out. Um, with number three rebar, I found that that is uh, the best way to do it is to pull it up on the way out. If you try to doby it, it's going to get bent up from people walking over it or the hose dragging on it. Then your rebar is not going to be flat. And you have a minimal area to get it into the right place of concrete. And if it's not flat, you're really going to have rebar sticking out of the surface of the concrete. So you don't want to have dobies and then walking on it and bending it up. So this is really a, a sure shot system that I've perfected over the last 30 years. I have both of my loads come back to back. This job actually calculated out if the grade was right spot on. I mean, uh, three and a half, four inch. I would have got away with probably 17, 16 and a half yards. When I went ahead and uh, looked at the grade the day before, when I set my screen pens and I decided this thing's going over. It's running about a five inch average depth. So I'm gonna get nine yard. Uh, I got 19 yards back to back loads. Two nine and a halfers arrived. I had uh, what was left. I could have carried 20. I went with 19. And I had uh, what was left in the hopper of the pump. So I got real lucky on this. So I didn't, I didn't have to get into a third load. And I didn't have to pay for extra concrete. It was just, you know, the right amount. Here's that valley. And uh, you can Fresno it in that direction. Because the vet, he's going cross with the valley so he's not affecting the uh, slope of the valley now if you tried to go the other direction you'd have uh, you'd probably be screwing up the valley at that point he's got a big old four foot fresno he's got a nice little rocker on there it looks like a nice tool That big blue is a little bit too hard to handle for a lot of people, so they go with the uh, light duty ones like that. Here's my two and a half inch deep cutter. I'm going to run to the corner of this garage and I'm just free handed it, no string lines, nothing, and it's not very straight. It had a nice little arch in it um, that was off the GoPro I got a new setup for the GoPro and it's uh, a body harness so it might be a little bit more stable so we're gonna give that baby a shot instead of the head cam I'll strap it onto the body this is a 3000 PSI and I'm using a different concrete supplier at this point. 
I like to check out different companies from time to time. Um, you know, it's probably you got to move around and uh, keep everybody, you know, on their toes this way. We've got a whip trial going down at the bottom and then we've got sliders on the first load last me going down the brick wall right there on brick especially if you don't have foam or felt against them uh, brick really will suck the water out of the concrete so you'll get a really dry edge fortunately I saturated this brick wall pretty heavily the day before because I knew that would happen so I put a lot of water on that brick just for that reason so it wouldn't flash dry on that wall here's the uh, concrete truck delivery previous delivery truck guy down there at the bottom of the driveway I've got felt along this back wall too. Um, when I run my hand edger along there, the nice thing about having felt on your low areas where the water's gonna be draining is it actually creates a trough so water can actually go out quicker. So I like to put uh, foam on water runoff walls. That way it can travel quicker and you're gonna have a lot less chance of uh, puddling as well. So on this, uh, see we got quite a bit of slope on this little driveway addition, uh, addition over here. So we're going to use the plywood, otherwise the sliders will just slide down the hill. And it uh, makes a lot more work trying to hold your sliders up and trowel at the same time. So we go with plywood. Here we are starting to broom the concrete. And that's me again, and I've got I'm running a head cam GoPro at this point. And uh, I keep my broom as dry as possible. And what I did is I really saturated these bristles a few days before with um, some penetrating uh, oil like WD 40, similar to that. But actually, I didn't use the WD 40, I used this other one, uh, Liquid Wrench, I believe it was called. Um, seems to be a little bit more oily so I went with that and that keeps my bristles pretty clean without having to rinse multiple times and a dry brooms better on concrete because uh, you don't introduce water into the surface which uh, weakens it so the drier broom the stronger the surface is gonna be Well, here's the trowels that I use. I've got a little mini one here that's uh, been well used. It's my scrubber. It's just a, um, what is it, a 3 by 12 or 14, something like that. I think it's 3 by 12, my small trowel. My big one's a 20 by 4, and that uh, kind of just wipes it down after I loosen it up with the small trowel. It just depends how hard it is a lot of times you can just uh, use the small one to lean on and just keep wiping out with your big one but if you want to save uh, energy and and work you know save your strength you can uh, loosen it up with that small trowel and then just stroke it nicely with the big one to get your lines out So I'm coming down on my sliders, brooming it as I go down here. We're doing it a little bit rougher than the normal on this slope on the entry. Just because you know, it could be a potential slip hazard. So we're going to do a little bit rougher here than what I normally would do on say a patio or something. 
that's on a flat area also I put this clear uh, this is a curing compound it goes down white but dries clear resin based water emulsifier emulsion um, it was hard to spray this so I sprayed what I could from the ground and then uh, I had one of the young uh, young studs go up on the wall and just spray it from up there and they were able to get the whole thing from up there and that wall is pretty solid it's a nice thing about it that wall is a good eight inches wide and uh, well made So this is the next day, snapping some lines here and there. I prefer saw cutting over joining, um, simply because I know that they're going to be straight when I cut them the next day, and I know they're going to be where I want them. And they're smaller, so they don't hold as much water, so you're not going to have uh, as much water staining and uh, erosion from water sitting in the joints and stuff like that. It's just a cleaner way to do it overall. It's, say you like the roller skate skateboard. Well, you can do that on with the saw cuts. I mean, if you've got some big old three quarter rounds, half inches, you're gonna you're gonna catch some of those from time to time on a skateboard or roller skate. You're probably gonna feel it. In this situation, uh, you won't. So I'm cutting about three quarters of an inch deep. I just use a nice straight two by four, the straightest one I can find. And it's because the concrete is so fresh, I put a, uh, a piece of plastic underneath the uh, guard of the uh, skill saw of the plate. That way it's not dragging on the concrete. Less resistance, easier to push, a lot of, a lot of benefits. But it kind of goes, it just goes on and on and on. As you can see, it generates quite a bit of dust from the saw cutting. And it's not fun pushing, it's not good to wipe it, push it all down in the street because you could get a, a fine or something like that from the city. Um, if all that dust goes down the street so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll push broom it first put it in a trash bag or I'll, I'll usually try to even uh, pressure wash it uphill into the backyard and let it go into the soil I had to drill this hole here for the gate they had a, no, what, that's not like a three-quarter inch Hole no, I'm about seven eighths. That is seven eighths hole for that gate. Pretty pretty substantial. Bigger than your average. As you can see, there's no puddles through that valley I created in the back. Everything drains out perfectly. Well, this is going to be a nice spot for an RV. Plenty of space to work all the way around the RV, load, unload. The only thing that was lacking, which would have been nice, would have been a sewer clean out over there. Anyway, thanks for watching my video and have a nice day. Don't forget to subscribe if you like them because I post them all the time.